We have some breaking news, as we mentioned, in the trial of William Porter. That's the first Baltimore police officer to go to trial in the Freddie Gray matter. The jury has sent back has been sent back rather to deliberate after sending a note to the judge saying they were deadlocked. I want to bring in MSNBC's Joy Reid and also Gregory Thomas. He's senior executive for law enforcement operations with the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office, also national president of the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives. Thank you both for, for sure. coming in on short notice. Uh, Joy, let me start with you. We've been watching this trial. We've known that this was the first of six officers to be to even go through the trial experience. And now hearing that the jury may be deadlocked, what does that mean to the city of Baltimore? Well, it's interesting because, of course, as you mentioned, this is the first of six officers to go to trial in the death of Freddie Gray. Three of the officers were the bike patrol officers who handled the arrest. And then you had the three officers who handled the transport, who faced the more serious charges. What's important here for the prosecution is getting a conviction on one or more of the counts here would help them obviously help their cases in the subsequent trials. So the fact that the jury is deadlocked, uh, uh, provides some interesting insights into what we've seen as a really serious deliberation. The jurors have asked for several pieces of information. They've asked for note cards. They've asked for audio. They've really been deliberating, uh, I think, pretty diligently over the last day. Uh, and we also, I think, in these cases, always have to pay attention to jury makeup because it can be very dispositive in these kinds of cases. William Porter is African American, but he is a police officer. Three of the uh, members of this jury are black men. Five are African American women. Two are white men and two are white women. Uh, and the reason that that's significant is that if you talk to attorneys who deal with these kinds of highly charged trials where race uh, becomes a factor just in the atmospherics of it, um, having more African-American jurors can actually change the balance in terms of the deliberations and whether or not you get an acquittal or a conviction because of people's predispositions predispos toward trusting or not trusting police officers. Gregory, Gregory your perspective on this, you, you, you've, you're in law enforcement, you're, you work with the Brooklyn DA's office. Mm -hmm. You've been following what's, what happened with Freddie Gray. Yes. Uh, this, this could, we had been, you know, on edge about what this trial would mean for the city to begin with. And, and if they came back with a not guilty, what that could do to Baltimore. Sure, I know the world's watching, too. It's important that, again, I'm happy to see at least the jury's into it, if you will. I mean, to the sense of really getting into the facts of, of the case, because on its face, it seems like there might be either, you know, one verdict for one group, another verdict for another group. But in this case, it's clear that there are into it enough. As Joy mentioned, you know, getting into more evidence and more, more readbacks is important. But I also want to make sure there's a measure of calm no matter what happens here. So I need to make sure that's clear that the Baltimore that reacted to the initial incident is the Baltimore that should not happen ever again because that kind of reaction sends a wrong message about how people respect law and order or in some cases don't respect law and order. And to be clear, we're looking at file footage here. We're looking at what happened uh, shortly after the incident with Freddie Gray. Uh, Joy, this case, uh, I remember when we were reporting on it, I think Luke Russert was out there yesterday and he was saying that it was hinging on what the officer did not do, right? Correct. It was about he didn't put a seatbelt on Freddie Gray. He, they didn't check him. Uh, and, and sometimes it could be legally difficult to prove malice for the absence of doing something. Right, and some of the charges against William Porter have to do with misconduct, have to do with essentially following proper procedure, specifically the allegations, as you started to mention, that he failed to buckle Freddie Gray into the back of that transport van. He was essentially handcuffed, placed face down on the floor of that van, moved around, and eventually suffered a fatal uh, injury to his spinal cord, which essentially almost severed his spine because his head uh, allegedly hit the buckle, inside buckle on the back of that van door. That he also did not call for medical assistance despite the fact that Freddie Gray, at some point, was in distress. There were a few stops that were made by the van, but there was no uh, assistance that was given to Freddie Gray. Did not respond to Freddie Gray's pleas for help, uh, in which he allegedly said that he couldn't breathe, and that Porter actually failed to help Freddie Gray, uh, and in a sense, turned the police van into a casket on wheels. And that, of course, uh, refers indirectly to this idea of a rough ride, right. that, uh, that a prisoner who is deemed to be acting up uh, will be taken on a ride in which he's jostled around in the van. Now, and that defense, was the prosecution's argument. That's yeah. the prosecution's argument. The defense argument uh, is that Gr Freddie Gray was alert and appeared uninjured and didn't complain while he was in the van. Uh, that Porter said that had he been injured, he would have called a, med a medic. That he lifted Freddie Gray off the floor and placed him into his seat, although of course he was not handcuffed. That Porter acted reasonably given what he knew about Freddie Gray's condition at the time, and that he actually went beyond his normal duty to try and assist um, Freddie Gray. So those are the defense's side of these allegations. Right. 
Uh, and again, he's facing multiple counts ranging from the manslaughter count, which would be essentially knowing that he, what was he was doing could have resulted in death or a seriously bo serious bodily, bodily injury to Freddie Gray, all the way down to misconduct. Joy, Gregory, hold on one moment because I want to check in with Ron Mott. NBC's Ron Mott is outside the court uh, with new details. Ron, what do we know about what the note the jury sent? Well, they essentially Kate said that they're deadlocked at this point. And of course, they got the case about 2.30 yesterday afternoon. And the judge obviously sent them back into the jury room to continue deliberations. Now, what is probably going to loom large now is this December 17th date that the judge said at the initial start of this trial that he'd hope to be done with the trial by this Thursday. Now, obviously, the jury can go as long as necessary to come up with a verdict if they can reach one or tell the judge that they're hopelessly deadlocked. But he obviously wants them to continue to put some time and effort into reaching a verdict, a unanimous verdict on these four counts. Um, we have not had a chance really to see where they may be split, how they may be split. Uh, it's hard to read juries and it's hard to read their faces when they come back and say that they've got some problems uh, trying to communicate with one another and trying to reach a unanimous verdict. But uh, again, we're going to be looking very closely at Thursday. I'm not exactly sure why the judge set that particular date. Don't know if he's got holiday plans and does not want to uh, interrupt those plans. Uh, and also, I guess, wanted to tell the jury about how long, how much time uh, they may be asked to uh, give their service uh, to this case. But they are under no official timeline to be done by Thursday. If this goes on beyond uh, next week, uh, they will have to do that. So that's the very latest from here, Kate. Uh, let's send it back okay. to you. All right. Ron Mott outside the courthouse. Gregory Thomas. Sure. Well, concerning to me in all these incidents, whether it be Tamir Rice in, in uh, Ohio or it was the case in Chicago with Laquan McDonald or, you know, again, most recently this one with Freddie Gray, is that there's passion on the part of the police department or police officers involved in that. But where's the compassion? Right. I mean, you mentioned earlier, again, failure to give medical aid to everyone I mentioned, to Mayor Rice, to Kwame McDonald, or Freddie Gray. That's a part of policing that we need to get better at, making sure there's compassion behind every event that you do. No matter what happens, be compassionate. And in terms of the, the jury and how long they could take uh, on this, I mean, th th there's no limit here, right? Ron Mott is saying that there's sort of this artificial deadline joy right. of Thursday, but they, they, can, they can deliberate until they absolutely cannot anymore. Exactly. Even on each given day, um, the jurors had the option to go beyond the 530, I believe it is, jury end time. And last night, I believe they went till about 6 o'clock. So the jurors at any point could continue to deliberate. The fact that in the middle of these deliberations, before we even get to the end, the technical end of the day, the jurors are already stating that their deadlock definitely uh, indicates that you've got some really serious discussions and arguments going on inside that jury. Because what's at stake here, they have to decide whether these were just uh, sort of accidental injuries that came during the course of reasonable duty by this officer, or whether uh, there was intentional ignoring of an injured man. Um, and remember, this particular case doesn't go to the substance of the arrest. That's one of the other cases uh, in which the prosecutor said that there was no actual reason for the arrest in the first place. But once Freddie Gray was in the, in the van, that it is William Porter's responsibility as a, as a law enforcement officer to see to his welfare until he is taken uh, officially into custody at, his, at the jail cell. Sure. Joy Reid, Gregory Thomas, uh, just to recap for people just joining us, we have breaking news coming in out of Baltimore, which is that the jury was deadlocked and sent a note uh, to the judge in the case of the first police officer to be tried in the death of Freddie Gray. Jury saying that they were deadlocked and the judge then said, no, you're going back in there. You're going to deliberate some more and try to come to a decision. So that's where we're at uh, in the ongoing case against that police officer. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.